everyone across the World Wide Web at RacerTV.com as we take this opportunity to welcome you back once again here to Powerline Park in beautiful St. Clairsville, Ohio for round five of UTV Racing here at the Polaris Ace Powerline Park GNCC. I'm Rodney Tomlin along with uh, Chuck Lamaster and also Megawatt Matt Watson will be joining us here in just a little bit as we've got for the next 45 minutes some of the most intense racing the Woods has to offer in side by side the UTVs here at Powerline Park and rolling up to the line first we've got uh, well waves of riders we're going to be sending out we got five waves of XC1 Pro drivers will be sending out with us here in just a little bit some of those XC1 riders in that first five waves include the number one defending champion currently second in points from Pataskill, Ohio, Kyle Chaney with his teammate Chris Bithel, Bill Patterson in the number two car in Morgantown, West Virginia with Mike Isaac and also Tim Farr in number four car with Angel Knox riding shotgun. One minute to go, folks. One minute to go. We also got Mouse Pratt in the number five car, John Barnes the number eight car, Marcus Pratt the number 10 car, John Kletz the number 12 car, Sean Bogdan is here with us. He's the 13 car, Kevin Trantham in the 20 car, Michael Swift out there in the 21 car, 28 of Justin Luptic. Uh, we got the 29 car, Clint Zettner, the 33, Devin Steenley also with us, Jamie McCoy, Richard Curley, Bill Ballas, nine time GNCC champion. His first time in a UTV race right out here with his passenger, Michael Tester. Also, Cole Sequoy, Jerry Bowling, Robert Boynton, Cody Miller, Steve Matko, and Justin Fleming. Miller, your current points leader in this one as our attention turns down to turn number one, where Ricky Towery sets with this green flag, reading these riders, and lets him know it's time to go in 10 seconds. In row number one, the 4-2-2 car, Cody Miller, along with Kyle Cheney, Tim Farr, Jamie McCoy, and John Barnes, ready to roll. And there they go, off and rolling here. Around that first turn, this first wave of XC1 drivers, and it's Kyle Cheney, the early lead in this one. Back to number row number two, the 591, Steve Magco, along with Sean Bogdan, also looking at Pete Libby and John Yokely, along with Michael Swift, in 10 seconds. And they're off on row number two. Again, remember, these are time adjusted, so everyone's time is zeroed out as if they all started off the same row at the same time. So these guys are racing the guys in the first row. The 808 car grabbing the early lead in this one. As we go down to row three, it is John Kletz, Jerry Bowling, Robert Boynton, Kevin Trantham, Cole Sequoy, and Devin Steedley. The 13 is Sean Bogdan was riding in the 808 car, by the way, as we are less than 10 seconds. Green flag waves on this one. And a great jump by the 33 car in this one. That's Devin Steedley. Let's see if he can hang on to it as they round the second turn now. Steedley out front. As he does hold on to it. Row four going to be Kevin Trantha, Bill Patterson, Justin Lukatek, also Clint Zentner, Bill Balance, and Rich Curley in seconds. Balance in the 103 cars, the green flag waves on this one. 9X, that's it. The Yamaha that has the 9X on it is Bill Balance. And watch him go, folks. Balance back on the track. Good to see him back out here for sure. Maybe it's a whole new racing world for Bill Balance now. As we go down to our next row, which will feature Mouse Pratt, Marcus Pratt, and Justin Fleming in 10 seconds. And they're off, the number five car, Mouse Pratt. Good jump off the line there for him. I think he may get the lead off this row as we head down to the next class, our XC2 Pro Sport. David Plobby out there with us, along with John Henry, the steel driving man, Joe Kasselich, Brian Riggs, and Chris Brockaway, all turning their attention up that long start to Ricky Towers. He lets them know, 10 seconds. And the green flag waves on this one. Look at that coastal car fire off the line, but it's the 555 triple nickels of David Plobby. Oh, he got the needle threaded on him, folks. Who's going to grab the lead? That's Brockaway. Brockway there getting that uh, lead now, it looks like. In row six, the first row of the XC2 Pro Sport. 
Row seven, the second row now, Seth Mitchell, Jonathan Powers, Rich Travelina, Christopher Hale, and Hunter Miller. And the green flag waves on this one. Man, I swear, I thought Bill Balance was going to pull the wheelie coming off the starting line in that Yamaha a few minutes ago. All right, here we go. It's the 90 car. It is Miller, Hunter Miller. I believe that's Cody Miller's little brother, if I'm not mistaken, as we go next to row three in this class. It's the eighth row. We got Gary Conklin, Rich Wheaton, Richie Nolan, and Chris Wolf. And they're off the 69 car, getting a great jump there. That's Chris Wolf. I Around the outside in the seven. Oh, up on two wheels in the 69 car there. The 714, though, of Richie Nolan going to get that lead. Chris Wolf is all over the place. Too much power for one man to handle, I reckon. XC3 Pro Am coming up next. Row one of this. This is row nine. 105 is Lucas uh, Wee Heller, uh, Mil Wee Miller, also Josh Davis, Leo Juliana, Brett Wingfield, and Eric Gordon off and rolling. The 1955 classic there. Way. Getting up on those two wheels will slow you down just a little bit. Look at that. The 777 of Josh Davis grabbing the lead now. And now as we go down to the four, it uh, looks like Darren Oakley, Denny Albrey, Jim Guggenauer, Scott Veckery, Robert Lisey, and Stephen Korintic. Ten seconds. And the second row of XC3 Pro-Am, row 10 on the race day, off and rolling the 412 car. Darren Oakley out front in this one. All right, keeps it on all four wheels, momentarily up on two, but Manny grabs his uh, traction and moves on as we move next to this third row, row 11 in this class. Luke Shepard, Colin Truitt, Roos, Reese Nutter, Clint Emerson, Veronica Weitzel, and Nolan Weitzel. And welcome back to the racetrack, Luke Shepard. He had a major get off, broken spleen and all kinds of crazy stuff. He and his wife, Megan, are riding together here today. But this is his return after a big ATV motocross crash earlier this summer at Unadilla Valley Sports Center. Up next is our lights class, Dan McConaughey, Scott Townsend, Brandon White, Bud Lawyer, Lothar rather, Michael Whittakin, Greg Jackson, and Bernard Benamati. Three thirty-nine. Oh, too much real estate. They got together out there. The was that three three nine car? Michael Whittakin grabbing the early lead in this one as we go down to the amateur modified. Justin Roshi, Chad Moret, Lawrence Sampson, Bill Ross, and Daniel Huniati. Huniati. We're going to roll these guys up a little bit so they don't have so much uh, space there. I think we're going to do each row. You guys want to move up. That's an awful long way to go. Ten seconds. Trying to keep the speeds down into that first turn. So we're going to roll everyone up. Basically, we're compressing you forward. Stay with your row as you move up, guys. Stay with your row as you move up. 34 car of Bill Ross. Great start here. Let's see if he's got it. Trying to find that. Might have been Lawrence Sampson there. All right, we're under our next row. Next, that's uh, Braden, Hay uh, Braden Hayden, Josh Lukatic, also Burn McCourt, Brandon Hayden, and Hunter Thompson. Wow, the 401 car, Brandon Hayden gets a good jump off the line there, and that's going to be enough to carry him into the number one spot, at least in the early rolling here. Got the 400 car right there beside him, and then we've got uh, coming up next, that was Hunter Thompson in second, by the way. Coming up next is third row in the amateur modified, Bill Bowen, 
Robert Hoyt, Wesley Lance, and Spencer Modlin. And I believe that Brian Wolf is with us in the 341 car, if I'm not mistaken. Annie? And I'm hearing that maybe Annie might actually be driving in the Wolf car, the 341 of Annie Wolf. I didn't even see him go by. All right, so we go next to the amateur limited class. Three rows of these, Stephen Golden, Austin Seelig, Mike Penland, Brent Kennedy, and John Higgins. John Higgins has got a fan here. Let's hear it one more time for John Higgins. He's got several fans out here, it looks like. <laughs> All right, John, you got the inspiration, man. It's all up to you. All right, we got some trouble and carnage in turn three down there is what the holdup is. Here we go in 10 seconds. John Higgins and the rest of the crew off and rolling. Let's see if that is going to carry John Higgins to the early lead. Actually, it does. Look at that, the 819. John Higgins on the red bareback machine. Grabbing the early lead net. That's the kind of inspiration you need out there. We also got Wade Poole, Vicki Fowler coming up next with Paul Yerkes and Jeremy Wallace and Austin Anger, Agner rather. And right now we wait for that green flag to wave. It's up. They're off. Race is on for these drivers. All righty, who we got? That might have been Jeremy Wallace, a 614 car. A final row getting ready to take off. Looks like Andrew Costanja, Devin Frederick, Gino Conley, Matthew Ashton, Logan Wagaman, and Jason Golden. Ten seconds. And the final start of the day. Around that first turn, the 852 car, that's James, Jason Golden. Golden boy here with us. And Golden's going to carry that one on through into turn three, it looks like. We look down on the start line, looks like we got, well, for the most part, a clear start. Still one more out of coming out of turn one right here. I believe they're climbing out of the car, so folks, don't cross the racetrack. Remember, keep a close eye on everyone and uh, be very, very mindful the type of racing we're doing out here. And of course, those of you at home, join us again here in just a few moments. GNCC Live and UTV Racing from Powerline Park continues after this. When it comes to protecting your engine, Amsoil offers the next level performance truck owners demand. Amsoil provides 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard, extending the life of pistons and cams. Give the vehicle you love the above and beyond fortification it deserves. Amsoil, devoted to protection. Maxis Times. Here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, our goal has always been to get you the best price and provide quality service. Now, we're giving you one more reason to shop with Rocky Mountain. We call it Quick Cash. It's simple to get. Just place an order with a qualifying Quick Cash item and get cash to spend on your next order. Try it out today. RockyMountainATVMC.com Get ready. 
And welcome back to Racer TV. This is Chuck Lee Master sitting alongside of Jesse Strawham in the announcer's tower. And it's a pleasure to be with you today at the Polaris Ace Powerline Park UTV race. We are finally getting our first live shots here on the track. And it looks like uh, our leader is Kyle Chaney, but we're taking a look right now at, uh, at a Yamaha, the number 222 machine. They're live on the screen, as you can see, uh, looks like we're farther back in the uh, in the pack. Our live shot is Cole Sekoy. But uh, as you can see right now, our track conditions are prime. If you've been tuned in to Racer TV today for our previous races, the ATV and the uh, and the uh, Polaris Ace Race, you probably saw a lot of grease and a lot of mud. But uh, here at the end of the day at Powerline Park, conditions are really tacking up. And this looks like it's going to be shaping up to be a very, very decent uh, race day. Jesse, uh you were out there earlier today. And it was it was super slick this morning. Uh, we we definitely were sliding around, had a lot of issues this morning, just couldn't get hooked up. But these track conditions now, it looks like they got that greasy layer off there, and they're really hooking up real good. Their tires look like they're getting a lot of traction, and they're getting through there. Awesome. Yeah, as you can see right here, coming up to the finish line, uh, it's it's uh, actually the slick conditions are packing down, and we got some uh, might be a little hard on top there right now. Amazing. I'll if you had been here Thursday and Friday, <laughs> it was really slippery. We're getting a look at uh, look at our leaders coming through the finish line here. Right now, it is Kyle Chaney in first place, followed by Tim Farr. Third place is Cody Miller. Fourth place, John Barnes. Fifth place, Mouse Pratt. And uh, we'll keep you updated with, with, the, um, with the running order as they start to develop here. But these guys are finishing their first lap. Looks like their first lap was about 11 minutes. Of course, the first lap is always a little bit different from the second and third laps. But uh, usually with UTV racing, we try to make it a 60-minute a, a race and hold those lap times to between 10 and 12 minutes. So this is probably a pretty accurate look at what, what we're going to be seeing as the day develops. As the day goes on, we will have a better idea of what the lap times will be. I think by second lap, if they're not far off the first lap, we'll know for sure. Yeah, certainly. Now, I was talking to Kyle Chaney down on the line today as uh, he was he was coming off the summer break and getting back into this. And it's been a, actually we say summer break, but we haven't raced UTV since round seven, actually. And mm -hmm. so it's been a it's been a long time for a lot of these guys. I know some of them went out to. Uh, out west for the Heartland Challenge with their UTVs. I was there. It was a, it was a oh really yeah, good time. Right. Yeah. I actually rode mis with uh, Mr. Penland. Oh, and, you rode with Mike? And it was an incredible ride. I learned a lot from him. Th there's the uh, the godfather. Yes. The OG. I, I was of honored. I was like, he asked me to ride with them, and it was incredible. I mean, I was, it was really an amazing moment for me to get to see how he drives. He's so very technical. He's a great person to ride with, and watching him drive oh, is incredible. Oh, oh, and he's oh, over. No. There, we're seeing our live shot. As you, as you can see, that is a very high-speed section, and coming into that ditch, um, all it takes is get get a little loose, and you saw it right there on live camera. Uh, one of our one of our drivers got a little, little hot coming in there. His suspension unloaded and just kind of put him over on his side. That looked like a rattle your teeth kind of kind of crash that is not a good time no but look at the spectators this is what is awesome about gncc racing is no that fence the, uh, barriers no fence barriers but the spectators are mud fleas um i was and this is off topic here but i was over in japan a couple years ago for the uh when we do the exchange program jordan ashburn went over there bike rider mm -hmm. went over there and uh they don't they don't operate that way over there they are so respectful and, and considerate of other people, but it is your race, and if you crash, it, they expect you to pick up your bike. So there was a rider that was crashed. It was a muddy race. There was a rider that was crashed and pinned under his bike, and nobody was going to help him. And I finally, I was, I was 200 yards away. I finally start running like, this is what you're supposed to do. And finally, after the kid was struggling, somebody finally helped him up. But the bare minimum help just to get him out from under his bike, and then he had to pick up his bike himself. But that's not how we roll at GNCC. So, no, we're uh, team players here. And, and the spectators get to be a part of that team sometimes, as you just saw on live TV there. Looks like uh, the race is continuing to develop again. That's Kyle Chaney in the lead. Tim Farr, Cody Miller, John Barnes, Mouse Pratt is our top five. In sixth place, Sean Bogdan, Hunter Miller in the number 90 machine. David Plavi from the XC2 uh, row has worked his way up to eighth place. That actually puts him in second place for XC2. Hunter Miller, uh, I believe that's Cody Miller's younger brother, as Rodney announced previously, uh, is in the lead for the XC2 class. And speaking of Rodney, he joins us here in the announcer's tower. Yeah, I do. Tower, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're sitting on top of a hill here, and we are overlooking 
We're one tower. corner <laughs> of the starting line. <laughs> yes, and uh, the high luxurious accommodations of the announcer suite here at Powerline <laughs> Park. Uh, no, uh, actually, man, what a great race that we got out. I mean, it all set sail this morning at 8 o'clock with the youth racers. Here we are up here. This is our fifth start of the day, if I'm counting them off right today. Amazing uh, battles all day long throughout the entire field. Got another one going on right now. And we also got a lot of spectators out there on the racetrack. I want to caution and remind you guys, please stay off the racetrack. Stay back away from the racetrack. These uh, UTVs are a little bit wilder, a little bit crazier, and a little bit looser, so you don't have as much room to play with there. So you want to be back as far off the racetrack as possible. So those of you listening to your radios, tell the folks that aren't listening in, go along and say, hey, guys, step on back. This is for your safety. Keep an eye on those kids. We want everybody to get out here safely. Not that we've had any incidents. We just don't want any incidents. <laughs> that's that's a good way to put it, Rodney. Not that we've ever had any incidents, but uh, yeah, f fair fair enough. And we were just discussing that as a, as a UTV flopped over on his side, and fortunately the the spectators were out of the way and quick to the rescue. Uh, taking a look further on here, it looks like we've got. Um, well, I'm checking live scoring here just to make sure that we're keeping you up to date with our with our latest results. And we've got uh, John Henry in the XC2 class. Uh, Joe Kriselich, also uh, XC2. Looks like Joe is in the 10th place overall, followed by Michael Swift, Stephen Matko. So there's there's a nice battle shaping up there as the XC2 guys at the end of one lap have already worked their way into the top 10 overall. Now, part of that is because the uh, the starting order, um, they, they list these, these fast guys uh, always, uh, <laughs> they were what, row six, I think, is yeah, when the XC2 started? Yeah, they were up there. So that's still very impressive that they're able to work their way up into the top ten after just one lap. Uh, looks like uh, what we're seeing right now with the toe strap, uh, this is the one that um, at the very beginning, at the start of it all, uh, he didn't make it very far. And so, unfortunately. He, I don't even think he made it to the first turn. I don't think so. He, uh, he ended up having to get a toe back to his truck and. That's a, that's a very, very short day for him. He, I'm sure he drove a long way, and that's a disappointment. And Always is. But, you know, when we come out here, the beauty about GNCC Racing is that we are a large family. So not only, you know, you come to the track to race, you come to also see your friends and everybody that you don't get to see all the, all the time because they do live so far away. I hang out with the Pratts. That's where I pit at. And I get to see them, you know, six times a year. Yeah, and, and like you're you're exactly right. They are family, mm -hmm. and so not all is lost. You come to the race, you break down on the first lap uh, or on the starting line. It's not a total waste because you've got a lot of people here to bench race with, and and you've always got that up your sleeve. That if I was running, I would have beat you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to take a look at. Um, let me give you a quick. Let's give you a quick rundown of our XC2 class. It's Hunter Miller in the lead, followed by David Plavi, John Henry, Joe Kraselich, and Seth Miller are your top five in the XC2 class. Our XC1 class right now, one lap complete. Kyle Chaney, Tim Farr, Cody Miller, John Barnes, and Mouse Pratt. So this should be shaping up to be a nice race. If, uh, if my math is right here, Cody Miller came into this uh, into this round after having four rounds complete. We've got two rounds to go of racing, but Cody Miller came into this with 106 points. Kyle Chaney came into it with 75 points. That is a 31-point difference. Cody Miller has a mathematical chance of, finish, of clinching the championship today if he can stay ahead of Kyle Chaney. But right now, Kyle Chaney is leading. But you also need to take into account throwaways as well. We In the UCVs, we do get one, don't we? Uh, not in the XC1 class. Oh, wow. Not in the XC1 class. So if Cody Miller can hold it together, he may wrap it up. He could. He's running third place right now, and he is following Kyle Chaney and Tim Farr, which are both very, very fast and skilled drivers. And you know how they get when they're together as well. They will check out as they, a team. Absolutely. And uh, they are separated right now. When Kyle Chaney checked in, he was 14 seconds ahead of Tim Farr, and Cody Miller was right on Tim Farr's bumper. So, uh, looks like uh, as we are out here battling with these machines, you can see, that right now you can see a great big mud puddle, but uh, as, you, as you can see, oh, here we've got Kyle Chaney, Kyle Chaney ripping his way through this uh, finish line chute. And he is looking good right now. That machine is hooking up. That th that he, he is, is on rolling. the gas because he does not want to get rid of that number one plate. No, he's <laughs> been able to wear that with pride, and his machine is hooking up. Now, in his passenger seat is Chris Bithell, 
And Chris Bithell is a former ATV pro, mm -hmm. has won ATV pro races here with GNCC. And uh, Chris has been the voice of reason for Kyle Chaney. It's, there's, after many races, it's been said that Chris is the one saying, hey, calm down. It's a long race. Let's take it easy. Don't be stupid. I think he's pretty vocal about, uh, about his thoughts. But the two of them work together as such a great team. Uh, let's see what's happening here. If we've, got, we've got Kyle Chaney in with two laps complete now. And we are waiting. For Tim, then for Tim Farr, yeah. probably. Let's see who we've got coming. See, they're getting into lap traffic already. That's incredible how quickly they do run into that as well. It, yeah, they they really ran these guys down in a hurry today. But there, you saw the that starting line. Mouse it was Pat, huge. Look, the number ten of Mouse Okay, Pat so that means we missed Tim together. Farr. We missed Tim Farr. Tim Farr is 14 and a half seconds behind Kyle Cheney. He so gained they, a second. So Kyle gained about a half a second on that last one. Cody Miller is still in the third position and right on Tim Farr's bumper. So with all the mud covering these machines, it's getting harder and harder to see the number plates, and we're going to have to on, depend on transponder scoring. Uh, there we saw a Yamaha get muscled out of the way. <laughs> and he's taking a seat, looks like. He's going to park it for a second. You know, that's one thing about GNCC racing is that uh, there are so many people out on the track. And, yes, you're racing for position and you're racing in your class, but there's always so many people, especially in UTVs on a five-mile course it looks like uh, we've got to look at Tim Farr he would be in the second place but look at that he was just he was packed into a bunch of traffic there so if he's going to get some ground on Kyle Chaney uh, he's, he's, he's got to somehow that. yeah he's got to get through the traffic there and Kyle Chaney believe it or not he has the tough job of being the snowplow he's the first one that's coming up on these this lap traffic and, and he's a lot the one of times the lappers think that they're right behind them so they'll stay over so when Tim Farr will come, you know, he may be able to get around. Exactly. Oh, hey, look at this. We've got uh, we got the 222 machine here of Cole Secoy um, in one of those Yamahas. He and, and Bill Balance are actually both driving yellow Yamaha, that YXZ. And, uh, and it's so good to see Bill Balance back out there, especially for me. I, I grew up racing GNCC and to see him back out on the track that's someone I looked up to I idolized him and this you know this track itself is really a wonderful place it always has been I love the quad track the big mud pit love going through that always got stuck every year but that's one of the best parts of this place Oh, you know, it, you bring up a good point. It is so beautiful. That camera, the way it was panning out right there, and there is nothing more beautiful than to see that scenery and then to see UTVs rolling right through. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You, know you got to love it. That's the beauty of GNCC racing. I think, actually, we have a scenic segment that we would like to show our viewers. Of course, this is very scenic right here. You, we can watch. We can sit and watch the UTVs roll around all day long, and... Uh, <laughs> it looks like it looks like we do have that scenic video queued up. We would like to show you guys a little bit about what Powerline Park is all about. We're back here watching the Powerline Park UTV racing. It looks like we still have the number one of Kyle Chaney in the lead, and there's no one right behind him, Chuck. It looks like he's still pulling a nice little gap on there, a nice little cushion. Yeah, we'll find out. He's due in in about six and a half minutes here if he continues his uh, consistent lap times. And that lap time, that, that time around was 11 minutes and 41 seconds. Uh, Tim Farr was able to do it in 11 minutes, 42 seconds, point 29. Cody Miller at 11, 41.9. So these top, actually top four guys, John Barnes in the number eight car, he did an 11, 42. And Mouse Pratt 
Actually, it looks like Mouse Pratt was the one that was on the roll, 11 minutes and 38 seconds, but that's that's like three seconds faster. And that's just a matter of having clear air. And he's uh, had no luck this season. I'm telling you, being with them boys in the pit, I hear I hear everything, and they're, they're ready. They're ready to get back on the box. That's where they want to be, but that's any racer. That is, but Mouse Pratt has been – has been at this since the very beginning. Hey, there's Bill Balance right there on our screen, the number 9X. Uh, you can see that on the side. Nine times GNCC ATV champion. Uh, won all those championships with Yamaha, mm -hmm. and uh, he's from, from Kentucky, and uh, he's been back home on the farm just kind of doing his thing. He owns a motocross track, and he's still involved in the industry, and I uh, was able to catch up with him on the line and said, hey, what brings you out here? And I said, Do you, hey, you've been driving these a lot? He's like, oh, I got a few minutes in them. <laughs> so <laughs> he's, he was playing but the you know, you know how he is, very, very, very quiet, doesn't say much, a man of few words, but he'll go out there and attack. He does not need to say much. No, he his, shows it. <laughs> his results always spoke for him. Now, this is the tricky section, and you see how these guys are uh, going to the right there. And that's where we had just seen one. We saw one flop over. They come out of that corner sideways, pinned, which is so cool. But it uh, looks like they've learned that they have to slow down just a little bit for that crossing there. And there's a line to the right there. You know, when I was racing these, um, which is kind of what got me into announcing these things, because I raced them for several years. This I would is where I rode out. with you. You did? It, was it Powerline Park? It was Powerline Park, yeah. That's right. Bringing back the good times. <laughs> we won that day, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah. That was a good time. Yeah, that was, uh, man, I wonder what, that was 2010. I think it was. No, 2009, because I, I tore everything in my shoulder and collarbone on the ATV and then hopped on the UTV with you that afternoon. Wow. Wow. What a small world. <laughs> yeah, remembering that. That's right. So um, that was a definitely a good time, and that's what brings me into the announcing booth today to, to share a little bit of experience. And I, one thing I would do was I would walk the track. Uh, mm -hmm. very, very carefully and slowly, yes. and I would look for those lines where I could go left while everybody else is going right and make up a lot of time. And I know that uh, I know that some of, I won't say who, but I know that some of our XC1 guys walk the track twice. Yeah, and they'll uh, do it on Friday and then again um, Saturday during the pro ATV race is actually yep. when they go and walk it again. Looking for lines to change. Looks like uh, our leaders are due back in in about four minutes here. Uh, just to refresh everybody's memory, it's a, it's a battle between Kyle Chaney, Tim Farr, Cody Miller, John Barnes, and Mouse Pratt are our top five. And they're, uh, they're separated. Kyle Chaney's got a 14 and a half second lead. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, that's not really a whole lot because anything can happen in UTV racing. That's true. You know, uh, whenever you talk about a 14 second lead in this type of racing, it's almost like that can be wheel to wheel. That can be considered wheel to wheel because uh, so many things, so many obstacles out there on the track that we talk about, uh, one of those, of course, are the other drivers. And, and, and you're limited on, you talk about t tracks being tight. And the guys, for the first time I ever heard them talk about it, but they talked about today's course being tight. The reason is, and I'll tell you, if you've been here in the years past, we've always had uh, a lot of the leaves gone or most of them gone, if not all of them, mm -hmm. and uh, or very beautiful, and a lot of the undergrowth and stuff w was kind of gone away as well. And you could see and more lines were opening up. But uh, as we were talking with Fred Andrews in the ATV racing, you don't have that option today because you can't see as far on the, on the forest floor. So you don't want to go out and venture out too far out of the main line. And I think that's what's tightened things up a little bit and keeping these guys more in a uh, uniform trail. Uh, I think you bring up a good point there with that. It's uh, That's a lot to consider when you're racing. It, it, I've raced everything with GNCC, from bikes to quads to UTVs. And uh, you have to be especially mindful with UTVs just because of the size of the machine and the speeds that you're carrying. Yeah, and, and it's a lot. And there's a lot of weight that you're carrying. That's And that's a lot of momentum. So stopping, you got to, I mean, stopping's a lot different. Acceleration's a lot different. I mean, there's just so many different variables when you're racing these side-by-sides like this. And right now, we're due in about two minutes. Uh, Tim Farr uh, had dropped back to second place. I'm not sure how things are going there for him. 14 and a half seconds, as we pointed out. So basically looking at 15 seconds. There is... Uh, Cody Miller in the third place, John Barnes and Mouse Pratt. And there it is. 
That right there is a hardcore GNCC racing fan. A couple of them, as a matter of fact. Look at him. That guy's got all of his lunch right there in his lap, the breadcrumbs and everything. <laughs> he has not moved all day long. He sat right there and watched this race all day. Has he really? <laughs> <laughs> well, you seen the pile of breadcrumbs in his lap, didn't you? He's eating sandwiches all day right there. <laughs> well, how could, you, how could you not watch it? It's such a beautiful setting with such a incredible talent out there on the track, you know. You can be fixated on this for uh, for an entire weekend, no doubt about it. If, if there wasn't so much that went into getting these UTVs ready. I really wish we had more UTV rounds because I look like that guy sitting at home watching Racer TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there with a lap full of food crumbs. Oh, always because, you know, I'm always sitting. So <laughs> yeah, there you there's go. always crumbs in my lap. I'll go to get out of my wheelchair and there will be crumbs underneath of my butt <laughs> on my cushion. And I'm like, Oh, I guess I was saving that for later. <laughs> <laughs> I like your sense of humor, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. have the lighthearted approach to life. I like it. I know. I tell you, I, I she embraces uh, everything so great. I love that. Uh, that's so, such positive energy. There's I'm having no a blast being paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really am. It's so much fun. Well, uh, and I get what you're saying. It opened up a new uh, a window of possibilities and opportunities. That I would have never even thought of. I started water skiing over the summer. Oh, wow. I saw a video of that. I'm that trying to get really on the cool. national team. And if I make nationals, I get chose to go to Worlds in Australia yeah, next most year. People, most people go down whenever something like this happens. She was inspired. Looks like, uh, as, as we pause from that, Kyle Chaney's ripping his way through the uh, finish line shoot here and had it briefly up on two wheels there. But overall, he is just hooking up, and uh, that machine is so dialed right now. You know, Kyle Chaney has been, he's got the number one because of a reason, and mm -hmm. one of those reasons is he does his homework. And, uh, you know, again, his, his co-pilot, his co Chris Bithel, there um, contributes to that also. The uh, amount of skill that's in that car alone, just between Kyle Chaney <laughs> and Chris Biffle. Well, between the two of them, they just are an incredible team. So much clearly. of that skill is setting up the car, yeah. getting the mm -hmm. suspension, getting the even the tire pressure. On a day like this, tire pressure makes a difference on how you handle. It does. And, and I'll tell you, JB Racing, uh, Jody Bateman has really got that dialed in. JB Racing, a lot of you guys might know his components and his engine work and stuff like that. But, man, he has got these machines dialed in. Uh, that's the team car that he runs for Factory Can-Am there. And Kyle Cheney, the, the driver of that car. I mean, just a, a, a amazing build, there's no doubt. And yeah. it's not easy to get that suspension set up either. It really isn't. It takes a lot of work. Yep, a lot of, a lot of time out there testing and tuning. And uh, You don't just bolt a couple, slap on a couple parts and go racing. And I tried. To do well. You tried? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> Now, uh, I did not have the stopwatch running here, but we are still waiting for Tim Farr, unless I missed him coming through. Is that Tim right there on, on camera? I'm not sure. I, I While I was out, oh, I that's heard. That's Kyle Chaney. That's yeah. uh, after the shoot. He's diving into the woods Actually, there. Tim Farr has checked in. Okay. 42, almost 43. He caught 42.9. We'll call it 43 seconds back. Cody oh, Miller Tim only got two and a half seconds behind him. Yeah, Tim got held up. And what? Well, Tim got held up because it was a 14 and a half second yeah. uh, difference mm -hmm. between Tim and Kyle Chaney. Cody Miller has been on the back of Tim Farr all day long, mm -hmm. and uh, it, Cody really needs to get around yeah. and, and catch up to Kyle Chaney. But uh, Kyle's driving smart right now, and he's doing what it takes. And it's surprising because Kyle's doing the snow plowing here. He's the one that's he's the first one coming up on the lappers, pushing him out of the way, and that's usually an advantage for people behind him. But you see that Kyle's stretching out the. Uh, Stretching out the time here in his lead, so he is whatever he's doing is working very, very well for him. It most certainly is. Now you got to go into the mode right now. You got to start thinking about uh, where Cody Miller is back there in the uh, number uh, three spot. He's about 45 seconds off the pace of Kyle Cheney. Uh, he's got uh, two wins this season, as does Kyle Cheney have two wins on this. Uh, the only factor there is is that Cody Miller has finished on the podium every time, a second and third when he didn't finish on, on the podium. Kyle Cheney went a sixth and an eleventh whenever he finished off the podium there. So that's the 31-point difference that we're, we're seeing right there. And with uh, the way things are looking right now, is – Cody Miller thinking right now championship and just ride for the national title right now uh, rather than push the envelope. I mean, that, that's a big question you got to start thinking about. He would lose five, seven points. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, man, unless he has a horrible, horrible day at Ironman, he should be able to carry that right on in through 
there and secure the title. He, re he really should. I mean, there's a mathematical chance that if he was to finish ahead of Kyle Chaney today that he could do it today. But I think the smart play, and racers are rarely smart <laughs> when, they're, <laughs> when they're sitting in that cage, but the smart play is to, hey, let's settle. Let's take another podium yeah. today and keep the car together. That's one That's one big thing. Talking to the uh, talking to the drivers on the on on the line today, that's exactly what they were talking about. Was that uh, hey, you know, I need to make sure with this mud that I'm not hitting the stumps, not hitting the rocks, right. because even with tire balls, you can rip a tire and ruin your day real quick. Real quick, no doubt about that. And and I think uh, all these guys know that, especially those front two guys, uh, Kyle Cheney and uh, of course your current points leader Cody Miller. Actually, with the championship being so tight and highly contested right now, uh, we caught up with both of these drivers heading into this weekend to kind of get their take on the season and what the next couple of rounds are going to hold. And they started racing them at, uh, at the GNCCs. I'm like, man, it looks like so much fun. And I bought one and, and got into it. And like my third race ever, I uh, was approached by Can-Am. They offer, offered me a factory ride, and I've been with Can-Am ever since. But it's just a rush. It's like, you know, the same thing on a dirt bike. You know, you have that rush, but with these, uh, you have someone in the passenger seat to share the rush with. So it's like, you know, after the race, it's like, you know, you've got like just a big story to tell. You know, with these things, it's, it's harder to keep them together than it is a bike or a quad. So, you know, with two rounds left, anything can happen. It's awesome. I'm so glad that, you know, side-by-sides came along and, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a, a shot to race them because, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are, are better than me or, you know, maybe more suited for this. But, you know, I got in it at the right time and, you know, I've just kind of, I clicked with it and we've been doing really good. And, you know, I've got a good team and a good backing and good sponsors and, you know, we've been doing good and just, I love doing it. Coming into this race, I'm, I'm 31 points ahead of Cheney and uh, I've got to beat him. If I beat him at this race, then that seals the championship. So that's what I'm going out to do. I could do, I could do top five for the next two rounds and still come out winning a championship, but I'd, uh, I'd rather DNF trying to win this race them to uh, to try and be conservative right now because uh, you know I've had such a great season I've got a lot of momentum building up to this and and so I'm definitely not going to slow down right now I'm just going to go out there and give it all I've got to try and come out with uh, with enough points to win the championship tomorrow my first year running the GNCCs so you know everything's been new to me but I've really felt right at home out here all of the all the people all the fans all the competition everybody's been really welcoming I've had a a great year and you know a lot of fun more fun than I've had in racing in a long time so I'll definitely be coming back and doing it again next year this year my brother and I kind of went for broke you know we invested everything that we could uh, and and came out and said we were gonna make a full season of GNCC and we expected to do well but I didn't expect to come out here and be trying to win a championship one race early um, so it's been a surprise for us and we're stoked you know my equipment's worked really good my my program that we put together in the offseason with all the sponsors it was really good, and it's we've had a solid year, and uh, we're just we're just happy to be here. And there you have it, man. It's uh, kind of the the tail of the tape is right there. They talked about it, and uh, like uh, Cody says, man, you know uh, it, it could be done here today, and it's a, quite a bit of a surprise for him, but uh, a good surprise in that. While these guys are dicing it out here, we should expect to see the checker flag flying in about five minutes. I want to run through class by class real quick, give you the top ten. Up, down, update, and actually, uh, uh, it looks like uh, we are looking at a two-lap card, so uh, this is going to be a little longer than I anticipated. But right now, as we approach the two-lap board in about five minutes, uh, we got Kyle Cheney leading Tim Farr, uh, Cody Miller in third, Mouse Pratt in fourth, Sean Bogdan in fifth. This is in class, by the way. Then we got uh, John Barnes, the number eight car in sixth, J Justin Luke Lukedick in the number seven position in the 28 car, 222 of Cole Sequoia is 8th, 9th, the 21 car, and Michael Swift. That's kind of odd to see him that far back. And the 591 of Steve Matko rounding out the top 10. As we look at the XC2 Pro Sport class, Hunter Miller, which is uh, the younger brother of Cody Miller, is out front of this class out of Greenville, Texas. He had only a three-second lead over Jonathan Powers, the 27, out of Lower Borough, Pennsylvania. A lot of PA guys in this one. Joe Kresselich, the number 15 car out of Carmichael's, is third. David Plomby, the triple nickels, that had a chance to meet him firsthand today. Not doesn't look like the guy that I thought he did. <laughs> <laughs> David he's, he's, he's falling back a little bit, too. He was up there. Yep, running fourth place right now to Elderton and PA. Carmichael's PA is the steel driving man himself, the 39 car, John Henry, then Brian Riggs, the number 685, and 6th, 7th is the 54, Sean Mitchell. 8th, Chris Wolf, the 69 car. Ninth, 
Richie Nolan, the 714, and rounding out the top 10 after time adjustments, it's Christopher Hale, the 713. In our XC3 Pro-Am class, it is Josh Davis, the 777. He got the early lead in that one, never looked back, only two seconds over Eric Gordon, the 911 right now to Connellsville, PA. Then Colin Truett, the 102 out of Nebo, North Carolina, is third, 410. Stephen Kuratik out of Waynesburg, PA, is fourth, fifth place. Lucas Wee Miller, uh, Wayne Miller, the 105 out of Seymour, Indiana. Then sixth place, the 522 of Jim Guggenauer. Nolan White sold the 324 car in seventh. Eighth place, Robert Lisey, the 402. Ninth place, Denny Aubrey, the 825 and the 106 of Veronica White sold. You know, that's interesting that Nolan and Veronica are both driving cars. Yeah. Uh, it looks they're like they're two-wheel motorcycle pilots, and, and, and extreme duro enduro type riders, too. Yes, they are. And I actually um, performed their wedding ceremony down in Florida three, four years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, they were. I'm the, the for those at home. I'm I'm the team faith guy, and so I'm the chaplain here at the track. And uh, they were actually my very first wedding ever. That I is performed. that right? Yes. Well, yes, imagine and, that. And not my last one. My last one was actually last night down in Charlotte. I flew in this morning to the track after performing a wedding for a uh, for uh, a, a kid that had been doing GNCCs for about a year and got to know him real well. <laughs> Here's something interesting, Chuck. I was asked to perform a ceremony. Now I'm not a, a, a religious. Uh, I mean, I'm religious. I ain't going to say that, but I'm not. I don't hold any place in church but uh, being where I'm at Joel Hetrick and his fiance asked me to perform their wedding ceremony they're going to go through all the uh, trouble of getting me the license to be able to perform and conduct ceremonies in Pennsylvania next September as a matter awesome. of fact. It's, it's for that's your awesome. voice that's why your voice is the most known voice in ATV motocross and GNCC racing. Are you calling out 10 seconds for the bride to come no, down the house? No no that's a whole different that's ATV motocross they wouldn't know what to do if I did that anyway. Over <laughs> <here>. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, well, we got sideline there. Yeah, well, you know, hey, it, it's okay. Uh, looking at uh, some of these uh, other, this other class, uh, the lights, uh, we got Scott Townsend out of Hebron, Ohio. The 612 uh, is uh, the 123 car leading the 612 car by a minute and 42 seconds. That's Bernard Benamati in the number two position. Third place, 339 of Michael Whittakin out of Belpre, Ohio. About two minutes down, I actually got the early lead in that. Dan McConaughey, the 38 car out of Holy, Holly, Michigan, is uh, running in fourth. Fifth place is Brandon White out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the 57. And looks like um, 338, Greg Chacks out of Fleming, Ohio, is your sixth place car there in the lights class. Uh, as we look at the amateur mod, Lawrence Sampson out of Bloomsburg, PA, leading in the 922 car. He had a five-second lead over Josh Luke, Luke in uh, out of Rogers, Ohio. I have a tough time saying that name, I know. But now 49 seconds lead, lead over that 416 car. How's that? 34, Bill Ross out of Favela, PA, is third. We got the 116, a Spencer model out of Omaha, Nebraska, in fourth. 910, Wesley Lance out of Philippi, West Virginia, is fifth. Then the 406 car, Daniel Cooney 80 is 6th, uh, 401. Brandon Hayden is 7th. Brian Wolf, 341 car in 8th. Ben McCourt, 407 is ninth, And Ben Bowen rounding out the top 10 in the 130 car. And I believe that is our field of drivers. And that is our leader right there. We see on screen, couldn't time that out anymore. Boy, Perfect. he sure couldn't. And <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like Kyle is just smooth and steady today is, is the name of his game. I asked him what he was going to do out there today, and he said, well, if I get the whole shot, I'm going to go fast, and if I don't get the whole shot, I'm going to go fast. So <laughs> 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 Looks like he's going fast today, Chuck. <laughs> it does indeed look like he's, uh, he's staying true to that plan. So our top ten overall, our XC1 Pro Class competitors, Cheney Farm Miller, and we are waiting. I think we should be seeing so these like guys uh, into the, for four laps complete here in just a few seconds. There it is. They're coming in for a white flag. There. Listen to that crowd down there, man. They're going nuts, man. Yeah. They are Cheney fans down there at the finish line right now. Well, that's part of what uh, has happened with this sport when it first started. Uh, I remember our first race ever in 2008 at Big Buck. I mean, there were just fans lined the entire two-mile course. Yeah. And uh, the enthusiasm has not dwindled because uh, – And that always surprised me. I never expected to see it take off. But it, I mean, when you look down and you see on the starting line what looks like a 1 o'clock start for a 4 yeah. or 430 and 50 or 60 guys or whatever out there on cars on the starting line. I, I don't know how many we have. It looked like close to 100 today. It, it looks like it was a big crowd today. I think we're seeing Tim Farr there on camera. Uh, we'll find out as uh, Transponder picks it up here in just a second. But we should be looking for um, – Cody Miller as well. Yeah, they're going through the finish line at the white flag. That was not one of our leaders. That was actually Nolan Weitzel checking in. 
I would not be surprised if when they come through that Mouse Pratt has made a pass on Cody Miller as well, because if you look at the last, he was only a second off. Of yeah, and he was so running about seven seconds faster, too. So, yeah, yeah, so we had a nice little freight train there with uh, Farr, Miller, and Pratt, but like you said, Pratt was the one that was looking for an opportunity according to our uh, our lap times and, and Far time is elapsed. In. Far's in, 56 seconds down, almost 57 seconds down. Still no sign of Cody Miller, the 422 car, and the number five car, Mouse Pratt, whom according to timing and scoring by all accounts should be in the number three spot we'll see whether or not that pans out or not that uh, a lot of times you can tell the tail of the race just by lap times and sometimes these guys it takes a little inspiration from guys like mouse pratt for cody miller to get the the, the fire lit and that wick up and uh, things going on there so here yeah. we go here it, i think this it, is them coming in now i think so and it's hard to tell because mouse pratt started on row three and, yeah. Uh, well, there's and Miller in right now. So Miller's in. Actually, it's saying that he is eight tenths of a second behind, but I'm not sure who he's behind eight tenths of a second of. I don't think that is uh, Tim Farr, unless we miss him going through. Maybe that's what the case was. We missed him going through. He didn't uh, check in on the transponder, and there was a bunch of guys going through, and I couldn't tell. I thought that they were nose to tail, but. When they checked in the, well, the transponder, it didn't show that, but it's, now it's, it's showing It's tough that. looking at the TV feed because everybody's so covered in mud that uh, we're not seeing number plates very well. Well, right now, John Barnes is fourth in class. Mouse Pratt, uh, who started on a different row, we're going to know here in just a few moments whether the number five car is able to inch his way into that fourth place or possibly top three overall position, depending on how far back he's starting here. And you know, last year we did see the Pratt brothers, Mouse and Marcus, on the podium almost every single round. And this year they just have not had the luck with them. It's been a whole different season, it seems like, for the uh, top drivers in these classes. Sean Bogdan has taken over fourth place overall. John Barnes is fifth. Steve Matko is sixth, seventh now, still waiting on Mouse Pratt to check in. He has not checked in yet. And that shouldn't be too much longer, I wouldn't think, unless he's ran into some sort of an issue out there, which would explain <laughs> maybe why oh he hasn't been the podium so much this year. Maybe you know, it happens every single race, Rodney. We're keeping our eyes on people, and uh, inevitably somebody runs into tr into difficulty. That's just, unfortunately, that's part of uh, UTV racing is the difficulties that we face out there. And with these bigger machines, they are more likely to break during these races. you got to think we're going through the tight woods. So I, don't that's don't know balance. I don't know if that's cold. Cole Secoy or if it's Bill Balance. They're both driving yellow uh, YX. Yeah, that's got a 9X on the side of it. That would be but That one might be Cole. Okay, yeah. that's Cole right there. And we do know that Bill Balance is out there, or was. You know, I didn't see his name. No, I haven't seen his name lately. I'm going to uh, scroll down Cole the Cole Secoy is holding down the number nine place um, in, the, in the overall. Cole Secoy was in the ninth place, which was the Bill, top Yamaha. Yeah, now Bill Balance, according to this I thought just said and I, yeah uh -huh. he is he just dropped out he was in the top 30 there overall yeah, I saw Bill Patterson there it Bill is. Patterson's running in the 24th place right, uh, which is kind of far back for him yeah so now we got uh, Bill Balance he is 34th place overall from the XC1 Pro class this is his first ever uh, GNCC UTV race so we got to give it to him on that but what I thought was really cool was I swear I thought that Yamaha that YFZ uh, car that he was driving out there I thought he was pulling the wheels front wheels off the ground I think he had so much power and was hooking up so much <laughs> that if Bill Balance gets this figured out he could be another com uh, formidable com uh, competitor that, I'm getting excited we could hey. have a whole new life a whole new race life for Bill I Balance was, coming I, up I was like you I was really excited to see him on the line and I was uh, he was on row four and on row one they were talking about it so <laughs> everybody's excited to see I him. think everybody's excited we're excited to see how he finishes up we're excited to see whether or not Cody Miller is going to be able to capture this national championship stick around folks gncc live continues after this i'm a sore loser i'm a sore loser losing is not an option for me be the best the best the best you have to have the best equipment under the hood that's why i i only use comedic products in my engines comedic gasket comedic gasket comedic gasket Comedic Gasket, a superior quality gasket for those of us who demand the highest level of performance. The wrong coolant can give you bad stuff like this and this. You need the right stuff. Evans Waterless Engine Coolant. It's waterless for a reason. Smart guys make it and smart people use it. Don't take any chances. Get the right stuff. Go to EvansCooling.com for more. 
I've been with LIAT for a lot of years, and I know the dedication they have for, for safety. When they told me they were coming out with a helmet, I signed right up. At Rocky Mountain ATV MC, we want to help increase rider participation at your next race, rally, or club event with our free Race Gas program. Join Race Gas and every rider that signs up for your event or club gets a free $10 gift card to Rocky Mountain ATV MC. It's that simple. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Razor, Ranger, Sportsman, Ace. If you live for the outdoors, there's a Polaris to match your passion. Confident, comfortable, capable. That's Ace. With a solo cockpit, automotive controls, independent suspension, all-wheel drive, and up to 45 horses of fuel-injected power. Calling it revolutionary would be an understatement. Polaris, the world leader in off-road. And welcome back to GNCC Live. Rodney Tom along with uh, Chuck Lee Master, the GNCC faster, and also our sidekick today and as well jesse strawham in the house megawatt matt watson out and about as well and this guy right here not having the best of days he, i've been there before he is going to limp it in on three wheels i was with uh hendershot that one day and we started out like that with three wheels and then we <laughs> lost the uh, we lost the second one back there and ended up finishing the race with only two wheels we only got to the white flag we were leading everything it was crazy but that's it Boy, I tell you what, this uh, this GNCC racing, it could not be done with just the pro row. It's, no. Uh, now, you know, no. that we talk a lot about those guys, Chuck, and, and that's one thing to point out, you know, that they are kind of, that's what every, not everybody achieves and aspires to be, but a lot of people when they come out here, that's what they hope to be one day as a pro rider. But there's many others that they never expect to, never want to, and they come out here, and they are what makes up the GNCC Racing Nation. It really is. Uh, I'm not sure what our, our list was today. Like you said, it looked like there were about 100 cars out there. And uh, only our only our first couple rows were, were the pro guys that are really working on factory deals. The rest of it was, you know, time and money spent at home. And, and so when you see somebody limping in on three wheels, yeah. that's, uh, that's kind of a heartbreaking day. But, um, man, there's a lot of... There's a lot of hours and time that go into the garage at home and uh, makes for good stories later on. Oh, yeah, no a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of opportunity to sit in bench race. Uh, I'm sure they would rather have uh, different circumstances to be bench racing rather than repairing cars. But well, you might bench race about it years later because uh, Jesse reminded me uh, mm -hmm. earlier that she and I raced. I, I drove uh, in the lights class here in 2009, 2009 yes and it's all coming back to me now because uh <laughs> the night before that i pulled an all-nighter putting that car together <laughs> i had bent the frame in the race previously and it took some time to get a new frame and did a complete you know off the, the off night the block, before everything the night before drove, yeah. worked all night long drove to the race got no sleep got here you know on a friday or whatever got a little nap and then jesse and i went out there and won won our class that, that day was my utv debut <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so anyway the amateurs you know we understand that there's a lot of heart and soul that goes into this as well as money and love the driving and, force and, of and gncc we yeah. sure appreciate them Yep, for sure. And uh, right now, uh, our XC1 pros, we appreciate those guys too. Cheney, Farr, Miller, Bogdan, Barnes, your top five there. Matt Coe in sixth. Lukadik in his seventh. Uh, yeah, Cole Sequoy <laughs> is uh, eighth place. I think I might add an extra syllable, though. Hunter Miller is the leader of the XC2 Pro, Pro Sport class. He is ninth place overall right now, so he is your highest placing rider not in the XC1 class. There is the nine-time champ. There well, is Bill Bowen. He's not even no. Because <laughs> he's balanced. a pro. He's Bill Balance. <laughs> he's Bill Balance. That's right. <laughs> Mud is allergic to that car. He don't stick on Bill Balance. <laughs> oh, what's Bill? Nobody. Yeah. Stay off him, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, that's All right. So now we know the, the, the muddy one is uh, Cole Secoy. He got behind He got behind the wrong guy. <laughs> yes. Bill, Bill Balance is being a little bit smarter about it finding the clear air uh, you know we saw William Yokely make an illustrious career in the side-by-side -side racing and to see Bill coming out and doing it now I think it's just awesome man I I hope we see a lot more of him in the future I hope so too and those boys are both from the same neck of the woods yeah. there in it Kentucky. would be cool to see Yokely come back and watch yeah. him and Bill battle it out oh that would be that wow. would be great 
I know the builder or like that. The way you think. Yeah. Their era, you got to think when William Yokely was in XTO okay. in and the then, ATVs. So we need to get Matt Smiley, Kim Kuhn. Oh, to see Matt Smiley <laughs> back too. That would be amazing. <laughs> well, we've already got Tim Farr. I yeah. Mean, he was part of that era. Yeah. All righty, checker flag about ready to fly as we see the number one car, Kyle Cheney, going to put the stops and the brakes on Cody Miller's national championship crowning here today. But guys, in order for Cody Miller to win the title, he'd have to win the race today. That's not the case, and it's going to be Kyle Cheney keeping the dream alive here in St. Clairsville, Ohio. What better place to do it than only about an hour and a half to two hours tops north of where he lives in Pataskala, Ohio, and probably about an hour and a half where he's at right now and he comes home here in Ohio to move this machine into the front of the pack take the win and secure still a life and a hope and a dream. He's not he ready to give up to. that number one. He is not. And there it is. The checkers are out. And Kyle Cheney does everything that he needs to do in that factory Can-Am car to try and secure championship title number two. And you're right. He's doing everything that he needs to do to keep that at bay right now. Cody Miller is also doing everything that he needs to do in order to win a national championship. At least he has been. We'll see if he continues to do so as we'll be looking for Tim Fire to check in in about a minute or so. Cody Miller would be about a second behind him, but I almost have to venture to think, looking at lap times, and get this, Kyle Cheney went down to an 11.26 on lap four. At the end of lap five, we'll see at 11.46. So right now we're waiting to see if Farr and Miller, what they've been able to do a third time is an 11.39 for Miller. He was only a second faster than Tim Farr last time. So the tail of the clock isn't saying that Miller should be around Farr, but I know these two are uh, pretty good buddies from ATV motocross days as well. So I'm sure that uh, they know how to, to tangle with each other on the uh, UTV track as well. There is the, is that the 422 car coming in now, I believe, or am I mistaken there? Let's double check here, timing and scoring as we traverse these final few turns here, Jesse Strawham. And I tell you, for these drivers right here, this could be the, uh, the moment they've been waiting for. <laughs> And, you know, I, I bet you that Kyle Cheney is going to celebrate tonight. I can't wait for the Ironman. I love whenever there's a close race. What are you doing, Ken Hill? <laughs> <laughs> points. Okay. Who is that? Oh, we got it. I wish we could put that picture. Ken Hill, our series photographer, has got a picture <laughs> of a dude that is just laid out trackside. And Ken's caption for that one is, when you GNCC too hard. <laughs> well, I tell you what, when you GNCC just hard enough, you move up to second place. That's what Cody Miller did. That's what we saw him doing there. A minute and eight seconds back. Championship, though, is only uh, 26 points away. And one more round of racing there for Cody Miller and uh, Tim Farr in that number three spot as they check in there. Wow. Now. Kyle Cheney's got to hope for the, uh, well, for the worst for Cody Miller at yeah, this point. You know, and that, that last race is going to be, it's going to be one to watch. It's going to be one for the books. When points races are that close, it always makes the best competition. That's going to be one where those guys are going to have to be watching their machines all night so the other guy isn't putting gas in their gas tank or putting sugar, sugar in, in their gas, gas tank. tank exactly. Stuff like that. Now, that doesn't go on. I'm just <laughs> playing. But, uh, uh, <laughs> We're very sportsmen here at GNCC Racing. I'm not saying that maybe there won't be a boulder or two unloosened on the A-framers. Or on, on the, the wheel, on maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding about that. Break too. line cut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I, I've never heard of anything like that happening. But now that we said it, what something like that crazy happened? That <laughs> <laughs> not that somebody does it, but it looks like somebody might have done it. Exactly, somebody. exactly. So uh, Kyle Cheney, the man with the plan. That is his third win of 2016 here. The only reason he's not in contention or isn't looking at winning that championship today. Is that 11th place? The 11th place position and a 6th place. He backed it up with a 6th place. But even with throwing out that 11th and yeah. another win or another podium, it, he'd be in a lot better position and situation than he's in right now. So, wow, what a, what a day, man. And that's, you know, it, it takes all the races, all six rounds in order to to claim a championship, so you've got to have all your, your I's dotted and your T's crossed and all that good stuff in order to bring it all to the point where uh, it is a national title. And these guys, 
Uh, they're crossing their T's, they're dotting their I's, and uh, both of them are, are, are working very hard. I mean, it's still up in the air. It's not guaranteed that Cody Miller's going to win that national title after that next race. You never know. You know, a DNF does outweigh an 11th place and a 6th place with as many pros that oh, are yeah. out there. Oh, yeah, that's going to take away a lot of points. And uh, uh, 30 points would be that, I think, is what they uh, score in their, their overall wins there. So, yeah, pretty uh, – Pretty extreme stuff there, so it's going to be fun. I know Chuck Lemaster is making his way down to the finish line podium right now. He's going to be talking with our top finishers overall. We talked about the top three, and for a long time, they were the only ones in. Took another couple minutes before we saw another rider checking in, a driver. Uh, the 13 car of Sean Bogdan checking in in fourth place. Steven Matko, the 591 car out of Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, uh, about 12 seconds back in fifth. Looking like Cole Sequoy, the 222 car. We saw that Yamaha car checking in a few moments ago. That was your sixth place in the XC1 Pro and for the overall as of the moment. What a day. You know, I guess it's probably a good thing these cars didn't go through the power line mud hole, huh? I wish they would have. That would have definitely made for a more interesting day <laughs> that the carnage down there would just be amazing <laughs> now let me ask you something jesse had they sent the polaris aces through there this morning would you have pulled the trigger or would you have gone around i would have tried it <laughs> i buried it the day i was having i just could not pull it together this morning so yeah that i wasn't didn't want to say a whole lot but you that could have said it you know i did not pull it together i basically i looked like a trail rider out there so oh, come uh on now. don't dog <laughs> on the trail riders they didn't look that bad I was first, <laughs> I know. I don't know what I was doing. I really looked like that was my first time putting a fire suit on and getting in that ace and coming out in GNCC racing. And, I, you know, I've been doing it 10 years. Yeah, and well, I mean, you got to take the good with the bad. When you start getting nervous like that, that must mean you're on the cuffs of something big. And you are. You were. Um, well, so this is how my seasons went. I started out in Florida with a fifth. Big Buck, third. <laughs> Camp Coker, fifth. <laughs> John Penton, second. And then here, fifth. Well, so, so that what's means next? you're gonna win. Number you're gonna win. one. That's it. You're gonna win at Iron Man. We get we done the, the pattern is set in exactly. stone right there. Jesse Strawham gonna win the Polaris Ace race <laughs> when we head to the Iron Man in two weeks. And that happens at nine o'clock on Saturday morning. Race fans come on out and meet Jesse. She is uh, a very uh, optimistic and happy young lady and always with a big bright smile on her face. And I'm telling you folks, uh, she if you if you were looking for somebody to root for and cheer on, she is certainly going to be one to do so. And you can't miss me. No. Pink car, pink wheelchair. Everything's pink in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Just pinky, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing's peachy. It's pinky. That's it. Nothing's peachy in this world. It's all pinky. <laughs> and uh, Hunter Miller speaking uh, uh, pinky and peachy and all that good stuff. <laughs> Things are pinky in his world right now, too. Speaking of pinky, too, we're going to be all pink. Now, you might be a little harder to pick out at the this Iron Man. This is true. That I is completely forgot that's the pink race of that the year. The pink race right there. Hunter Miller, by the way, finishing seventh. He wins the XC2 Pro Sport class. He finishes seventh overall. So way to go, Hunter. That is uh, Cody Miller's little brother there, or younger brother. I don't know if he's any littler than him. <laughs> but uh, we got uh, Hunter there in se seventh. Eighth place will be J Justin Ludic Lud Lud Ludic There you go again. <laughs> I know. Huh? Justin, the 20 in the 28 car, and then Joe Kresselich. I've finally been able to pronounce his name, and he's got a, a different spelling to his name, too. Mm -hmm. In the 15 car, he's going to be ninth overall, at least at the moment. Jamie McCoy, I think we're looking, has scored 10th place overall. So uh, congratulations to Hunter Miller. Uh, second place, Joe Kresselich in that class is ninth overall. So top, a couple of top XC2 Pro Sport class riders there in the top 10 today. Pretty impressive. Ooh, look at this, man. This is getting gnarly coming in with these guys. They must be battling for something <laughs> pretty intense here. And that's really impressive to see those XC2 guys get up there in the top 10, in the mix with those XC1 guys, because there are so many rows. Yeah. And what was it, six or seven, I think, XC1 rows that we went through today. And yeah. That's, that's a lot of rows to, to have to work through and get in, in there and time adjustments like that. But when these guys start, at every, like everybody starts on different rows, kind of like every other, all the times are zero. So everybody's racing on the same time. So basically, uh, they're not racing each other physically. They're racing each other on the clock. So, so there is time adjustment with those different rows. Yes. Yeah, so if you start, uh, say, the front row starts at uh, 1 o'clock and you start at uh, 101 or 105, uh, that your five minutes is going to be placed in there, so yeah. that way you are on the same time. Exact same time. You're on zero time with them. So if you turn a faster lap than the guy up front, 
then you're going to be overall leading that thing by time adjustments. That's how it all, and we see that happen oftentimes. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, a lot of exciting things in today's race, and I think we'll see a lot of exciting things in tomorrow's race. And we got a lot of exciting things to talk about when we head down to the podium where Chuckley Master is making his way down to, and we'll be back with more GNCC Live right after this. When it comes to protecting your engine, Amsoil offers the next level performance truck owners demand. Amsoil provides 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard, extending the life of pistons and cams. Give the vehicle you love the above and beyond fortification it deserves. Amsoil, devoted to protection. Maxis Tires. Here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, our goal has always been to get you the best price and provide quality service. Now, we're giving you one more reason to shop with Rocky Mountain. We call it Quick Cash. It's simple to get. Just place an order with a qualifying Quick Cash item and get cash to spend on your next order. Try it out today. RockyMountainATVMC.com Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live. Rodney Tomlin along with Jesse Strawham and also Chuckley Master making his way down to the podium as we come to you live from the, the Polaris Ace Powerline Park GNCC, the penultimate round, the next to the last round of GNCC racing for 2016. And not only was it uh, the next to the last round uh, for the ATV XC1 Pros today where we crown for the second consecutive time, Walker Fowler, his uh, national championship title, but also the next to the last round of racing here in 2016 for these uh, these guys in the uh, UTV races, Jesse. And uh, with the way this one finished up today, it's going to go one more round before we can declare a champion. And th that's going to really make the Ironman. Everyone's going to need to tune in to Racer TV for sure on the Ironman just to see how that shapes up for Cody Miller. No, I agree wholeheartedly. It's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty exciting to, to say the least. I know the guys are making their way on over the podium. Let's go ahead and run down some of these classes real quick to let you know how things do break down. The XC1 Pro class, which most of these guys took the overall top 10, uh, but uh, we got Kyle Cheney, Cody Miller, Tim Farr, Sean Bogdan, Stephen Manko. Those were your top five overalls. Cole Sequoy finished sixth overall. Justin Lukatic is seventh in class. Marcus Pratt is eighth. 403 car of Robert Boynton is ninth. And Jamie McCoy rounds out the top 10 in the XC1 Pro class. Looking at the XC2 Pro Sport class, Hunter Miller taking the win about 43 seconds over Joe Kresilich. Uh, the 15 car, John Henry, the steel driving man, about a minute and three seconds back and forth. David Pompey out of Elderton, PA on the 555 car. The triple nickels, as we always like to call him, he finishes up fourth today in class. Fifth place, the 685 of Brian Riggs out of Waynesburg, PA. Then in sixth place, the 69, Chris Wolf out of Motesville, West Virginia. Seventh place, 713, Chris Hale from Woodlawn, Illinois. A spot, the 714, Richie Nolan from Masontown, West Virginia, where we were last weekend. Out of Ashtabula, Ohio, home of the Pine Lake TT. Uh, that right there is a great uh, four-wheeler race, by the way. Chris Brockway, the 23, finishing in ninth. Jonathan Powers, the 27, out of Lower Borough, PA, rounds out the top 10 in the XC2 Pro, Pro Sport class. XC3 Pro-Am. 9-11, Eric Gordon out of Connellsville, PA, taking a 13-second win over the 777 of Josh Davis out of Statesville, North Carolina. Jim Guggenauer, the 522 from Jefferson, PA, in third. Then looking for in fourth place, the 102 of Colin Truitt with the 324 car in fifth of Nolan Weitzel. Then we're looking at uh, Lucas Wee Miller. Wee Miller is sixth. Denny Aubrey, the 825 in seventh. Veronica Whitesell is eighth place, the uh, wife of Nolan there. In ninth place, Brett Wingfield, the 121 car in ninth and 10th place. Reese Nutter, the 838. Man, I got to say, I really envy uh, Nolan and uh, Veronica's uh, lifestyle because those two, they work very, very hard. 
and they race very hard. They travel all over the country doing all kinds of sorts of uh, off-road racing, and they do it together, and I think it's great that they're doing the side-by-side -side stuff together now. And that well. they race against each other. Yeah. You know, that, that makes for interesting conversation on the drive home. Well, I'll tell you what. It's going to make for a rough ride home for Nolan because he ended up beating Veronica, and she doesn't like to be beaten at all, especially no. by, by Nolan. <laughs> no, no, I don't think any woman likes to be beat by their significant other. <laughs> so uh, lights class right now, Scott Downs <laughs> in the 123 car out of Heber in Ohio. Four-minute win over the 612 of Bernard Benamati out of Mather, PA. Third place, the 57 of Brandon White out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Line of fourth place, 38, Dan McConaughey out of Holly, Michigan. Then we got uh, Michael Whittakin out of Belpre, Ohio, the 339 car in fifth. Greg Jackson out of Fleming, Ohio, the 338 car, rounding out sixth place there in that, uh, what was that? That was the Lights UTV class. Then we've got the Amateur Modified, our last class there. Bill Ross, the 34 car out of Avella, PA. I think he did a uh, a wire-to-wire -wire thing there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he had a 49, call it 50-second lead over the 416 at last check there. Uh, Josh, actually, I think they're in already. So, uh, Luka Dick is uh, second place. Spencer Modlin, I might have gotten it right that time. Spencer Modlin, 116 and third out of Omaha, Nebraska. Philippi, West Virginia, home to West Lance, the 910 and fourth. Then Dan Huniady, uh, the 406 car out of Carmichael's PA is fifth. Bloomsburg PA's Lawrence Sampson finished sixth in the 992 car, seventh place the 341 of Brian Wolf out of Medina, eighth place the 401 Brandon Hayden out of Frankfort, Kentucky, ninth place the 130 Bill Bowen out of Mongahela, Monongahela, Pennsylvania, and rounding out the top ten the 407 of Burn McCourt out of Kingwood, West Virginia. I like the name Burn. Shorten up Burning and you got Burn. Ow, that burned. <laughs> what are you drinking there, anyway? That's got sparkles, or is that frog eggs? Um, fish eggs. Fish eggs? No. You're drinking caviar <laughs> here. <laughs> because we're that fancy up here. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how great in we've the got power. in the announcer's tower here. At we've got caviar in a bottle. In a bottle, of no doubt. <laughs> 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 Chuck Lamast, I sure hope you got things coming together down there on the podium pretty soon. We're getting pretty slap happy here. We're yeah, getting a little we, pushy. <laughs> are we running out of uh, filler material up we're there, Rodney? We're running, running out of filler material, but it, we, 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 we'll come up with something here pretty quick. Right, I well, well good news is I see Cody Miller. I see uh, I see Kyle Chaney, and we'll be looking for Tim Farr, and we'll have him up on the podium in here in just a minute. All righty, sounds good. Now, for you folks that are – Watching at home, or you're going to be around tomorrow here in St. Clairsville, Ohio. We invite you back over here tomorrow. We got youth racing getting underway tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. We got uh, the 10 o'clock race, which will feature sportsmen and uh, women's, women's the WXC. We've got which uh, Becca Sheets wrapped that up last week, yes, didn't she? Actually, Ohio girl herself, mm -hmm. her first ever uh, national championship. Uh, a year ago, she was struggling just a to win. Yes, a huge congratulations to her. She's really worked her butt off to get that championship, and I'm I'm so thrilled. I know. I, I watched her cry so many times <laughs> at just so, coming so close to just winning mm -hmm. a race, let alone winning a national championship, man. That, that She's got the bar set for herself high now, there's no doubt. And, uh, of course, we'll be seeing that tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock. And then, of course, Caleb Brussels stands the chance to wrap up championship number four here in St. Clairsville, Ohio, his home state, if you will. And mm -hmm. what better place to do it? And, of course, I think he would – didn't he do it here last year, I think, at this race, yeah, if I'm not mistaken? And that was the – Oh, it was oh. at Unadilla last year. It was, it was the year before, you know. Uh, he, yeah, who knows. But He is just incredible. He is. And, and uh, of course, last year, you know, uh, I, I maybe Caleb didn't even race this race last year. No, because he didn't – he, he had, had to have surgery. surgery. Yep. Yeah. That was right. He had, that was after that incident of the um, – the ISDE, which will be coming up here pretty soon. Uh, we uh, got some special things that we're going to be doing tomorrow for the riders, the junior trophy team and the trophy team tomorrow. And we'll be uh, talking about that during uh, Racer TV. But you'll uh, see the, the likes of Stu Baylor and Grant Baylor. you got to love the Bra Baylor brothers. Oh, they're, yeah. they're a blast to watch. Yeah, they're going to be on that junior trophy team together. And right now, look at that, man. we got all smiles on the <laughs> podium down there right now. And probably the biggest smile of all is uh, the guy that's getting to hang out with all these guys right now, and that's Chuck Lee Master. By the way, just want to remind folks, Team Faith, uh, that guy right there, our GNCC pastor, 
will be uh, hosting a uh, youth activities, family activities coming up here at 6 o'clock. And at 7 o'clock, non-denominational chapel services there at the Team Faith Transporter on Bender Row. We're going to head on down to our GNCC pastor and our co-announcer here for the UTVs, Mr. Chuck Lee Master. Hey, thanks a lot uh, there, Rodney. We're actually getting the getting the drivers and co-drivers out of the car, and I'm going to scoot out of the way for just a minute while Ken Hill gets pictures as uh, daylight and the overcast skies are making pictures difficult for the moment. So give me just a minute here. You know, it's it's been a heck of a day out there, Rodney and Jesse, and appreciate you guys joining me in the announcer's booth and. Uh, that last lap, certainly a lot of things changed, and uh, we'll be talking about it here in just a minute. As soon as we finish up these pictures, can't wait to talk to the Tim Farr, uh, Tim Farr and Angel Knox as they were in that uh, in that number four car and held down the number two place for most of the day, and things changed on that last lap. So we'll find out for sure what happened here in, in just a moment. All right. Excuse me here, Angel. All right, standing here on the podium with uh, Angel Knox and Tim Farr. Looks like uh, looks like it was quite the day out there for you, Tim. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. The track was, uh, you know, it looked fast in the beginning. I mean, there were fast sections, but with the lappers coming in, it slowed up quick, and we, we had a lot of challenges. <laughs> you know, it seemed like every time I saw you on the Racer TV live feed, you were in the middle of a pack of lappers, so there's no doubt that that was uh, one of the track obstacles today. Um, but also, it looks like the conditions seem to improve as these heavy machines are out there on, on the uh, trail. Looks like things were getting a little bit faster towards the end of the race. Yeah, they were. Uh, the track actually came in really nice. It tacked up. I mean, there were still some slippery spots after the creek crossings and whatnot, but it did. It, the pace was good, and I think, you know, obviously it, it, was, it was a pretty quick track, and we ran good in the first lap and um, ran into the lappers right away. Yeah, we could tell that before before the end of the second. I mean, you guys were just barely into the second lap, and you were running into lappers there. There were a lot of cars, a lot of entries, and I, I suppose that's good for the sport that we've got that many entries coming in, but uh, certainly makes for a challenging day. Um, Angel, you got anything to add here? No, it's, um, well, Timmy decided he was going to put us on our side the last lap, trying to make up some ground because we got it stuck in a bottleneck. But um, you know. Well, we were wondering because, uh, you know, you held down the number two spot for a long Time and uh, the the rumor was is that his co-driver pointed at the bad line. That would never happen. I will say he might not listen once in a while, but that would never happen. I'm uh, making that up for sure. You guys, uh, you guys certainly make a good team out there. Tim, who would you like to say thank you to? Uh, Can Am. Our Mavericks were great today. You know they're all up here. We ran strong. Uh, JB Racing, Hauser Racing, Baldwin Motorsports, Maxxis Tires, uh, DWT Wheels, SSI Decals. Um, I'd like to thank Angel, I'd like to thank Alicia for riding with me this year. We've had a lot of fun and uh, it's been a great time. I mean, today was really fun. It was just uh, battling with lappers. Kyle drove awesome, my hat's off to him. He's, he was incredible, he was perfect. He checked out and uh, got through lappers really quick and you know, we, we couldn't, we really didn't have anything for him. And Cody and I had fun and then the last lap, we, we really had a good time, but it got crazy. Like I tipped over and then we got hung up, you know, I. He got by me and then I tipped over, got back over in front of him, got going again, got to another lapper here right before the finish and I, I followed him into a line and Cody got me. But it was fun, it was clean racing and we had a great time. Fantastic, well, well thanks a lot for being here with us at GNCC and we look forward to, uh, we'll see you in three weeks at Ironman. Yep, yep we'll be ready. Fantastic. I'm going to fall off the podium one of these days here. Uh, man, it sounds like you had a really good ride going out there, Cody. It, uh, you were in third place most of the race, and then that last lap must have just been a tremendous lap. Yeah, I tell you what, it sure was hard. Tim Tim was running a strong race out there. He never missed a beat. Every every lap, you know, I'd try and stick him in different places, but he, he was always consistent. He was always right there. He never made a bobble. Finally, the last lap, we got caught up in a bottleneck back here, and... Uh, one of the guys was going up the hill in front of us as we were going around it, smoked his belt, so I backed off of him and went up another line, and as soon as I did, it dipped back in the track, and I got locked in between a tree and, the, and an abrupt wall, and then Tim comes flying up over next to me and just rolls it over. 
and <laughs> and so I looked over like, all right, he's he's stuck. I'm gonna get this thing out of gear and, and get around him. And then sure enough, uh, two spectators came right around, stood right in the trail, flipped him over, and we both took off again. So I went. I was in first or in second for about two seconds. So so you went from from panic to relief to now it's a race. Yeah, and then it was on, and so I hammered down, you know, behind him the whole last lap, and you know I was hoping to make a a pass over here in the open section, but he was just getting faster there every single lap. And, and then finally a lapper got uh, right in front of us there, and, and I was able to, to capitalize. Tim tried to pass him on the on the uh, right side through some small tight trees, and I just followed the guy through the left side and, and actually made a pass on Tim. And, and that was only about 30 seconds before the finish line, just basically like the 4x4 pro race earlier today. So it, Tim and I definitely had a good strong race. Kyle was out front, and he was, he was on a rails today. And... Uh, Congratulations to both those guys. We uh, we had a good time out there today, and I just uh, would like to say thank you to Can Am for for getting us all all three of us up here and, and giving us the opportunity to come out and compete in this GNCC. Uh, we've had a, a lot of fun this year. I'm I'm having a good championship run. I've got to go to this last round and, and try and finish consistent. And uh, you know, once again, just thank you to Can Am, Elko Suspension, Maxxis Tires, EWT Wheels, SSI Decals. My mom and dad are actually out here this weekend. I'm pumped up. So anyway, thanks for all the spectators and everybody to come out and watch. And uh, thank you to Kevin Cunningham. Him and I had an epic battle in the 4x4 pro race earlier today. And then he jumps in the in the passenger seat and gives me all the right directions. And you know that's uh, that's a team player. So thank you, uh, thank you to everybody. So Kevin, he didn't worry you out too much. You were able to come out here and, and point some lines. Yeah, I tried to point as many lines as we could for him. <clears throat> he beat me up a few times. There's a few holes I was trying to get him going around. He just blast right through him so uh but no it was a good time he he drove the wheels off his car and uh good to, or glad to see him put it up here in second fantastic well congratulations to both of you guys and thanks so much for being a part of this and we are really looking forward to that iron man round we'll see you there in a couple weeks <laughs> moving my way to the center of the box here i'm going to stand between the two of you guys i suppose hey thanks for keeping me from falling off there yeah yeah kyle great job today man you you took out you you took off had the whole shot, you led through the first lap, and you, you just immediately started pulling a lead. And with every lap, uh, you were supposed to be snow plowing. In other words, the, 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 the lappers were supposed to be slowing you down, and you got faster. Yeah, my car was working so good. I definitely don't have any good stories like these guys do. Um, you know, I got, I got out front, my car was working awesome. My Max's tires were, were hooking up, you know, as good as they could today for, for the conditions. Uh, lappers were horrible. We, uh, we got into them really fast. Uh, I think, you know what, I heard when we came around on our first lap, they just went off the line. So we, right when we went in the woods, we were in lappers. And, you know, when you catch them later in the race, it's, it's better because they're spread out. But when you catch them in there in a train, it's like, you know, they're racing and you're racing. It's like, you know, I start panicking because I know Tim and Cody's coming. I'm like, I got to get around these lappers. And you start making mistakes. But luckily I have Chris Bissell in the, Bissell in the car and, you know, he keeps, me, keeps my head straight. And, you know, we, we just had a good race today. Yeah. Well, speaking of, Chris, did you have any trouble with your driver today? Uh, well, a couple of times I had to slow him down sometimes. And uh, this track, actually, a, a lot of the mud holes, they were pulling up onto the, the blue groove track and making it pretty slick. And uh, I just had to remind him, you know, that we had to ease up into one of these sections where the first two laps we were able to hammer through them. But, no, he, he drove the wheel off this car. And um, everything was just working perfectly. And, uh, I mean, I was really surprised going out there. And he was just pulling from lap one. And, you know, we just never looked back. You know, that is exactly what it looked like on, on the uh, Racer TV feed, was that you were just having a smooth, consistent day, and the car was hooking up, and, and you've done your homework in the off season, and, and here you are in the middle of the box, uh, two races in a row. Yeah, I knew I had to do it, um, you know, to keep my championship hopes alive. I mean, I give it up to Cody. You know, he's done what I've wanted to do for years. I've wanted to be on the podium every race for years, and he, he's done it. So, I mean, he's got one race left to do it, and, you know, if he does it, can, you know, my hat's off to him. You know, I'll hand him over the number one plate gladly. Well, fantastic. That is sportsmanship, and that's what GNCC is renowned for. We are so proud of all of our racers up here, and especially you, Kyle Cheney. Congratulations on, on this win. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, uh, Can-Am, um, you know, for one, you know, they've been winning podiums out here for the last couple of years. I mean, you know, uh, DWT wheels, Maxxis tires, my mechanic, my girlfriend, my dad, all my friends that came out, out to watch, factory UTV, uh, skid plates, uh, STM clutch, my clutch hooked up awesome today. I mean, I didn't slip one time. You know, uh, we're running stock belts, and you know, I know they're running. I think Cody's running a Gates belt, but uh, 
you know, we haven't had any problem with belts this year. And, you know, in the past couple of years, we've had some belt problems, not this year. Um, you know, there's bell helmets. You know, there's a lot of other people I'm, I'm maybe forgetting. Uh, Rival Motorsports, that they helped me out. They're a local dealership not too far from here. If you guys are looking for uh, a buggy to come out here and race or just to uh, to go mud run, you know, it's a good place to, to get them from there in Thornville, Ohio. Uh, and uh, all I got to say is, oh, H! There it is, folks. Give it up for number one of Cody, or uh, I'm sorry, of Kyle Cheney here. We got Cody Miller in second, Tim Farr in third. And uh, let me get out of the way here before we start spraying the champagne. And letting loose with the champagne. All right, Rodney, I'm going to kick it back up to you there. Podium celebrations continue down here at uh, GNCC Powerline Park. All righty, thank you very much, Chuck Lee Master. And as we always like to say, to the victor goes the spoils, and the spoils of GNCC, the sweet, sweet spray of champagne. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us here today from Powerline Park. We're going to be back here again tomorrow, coming up on about 1 o'clock for the two-wheel motorcycle action. Can Caleb Russell make it four championships in a row tomorrow here in his home state of Ohio? Tune in, 1 o'clock. On Sunday, racertv.com and GNCC Live. For all of us here today at the uh, Polaris Ace Powerline Park GNCC, on behalf of uh, Chuck Lee Master, of course, uh, Jesse Strawham, Megawatt, Matt Watson, and Fred Andrews, I'm Rodney Tomlin saying, great day, everybody.